we are done with sinusoids and now we will have discussion on phasers phasor is a complex number that represents the amplitude and phase of a sinusoid so phasor is a complex number representing two things of a sinusoid first one is the amplitude and the second one is the phase for example if we have a sinusoid vt and it is equal to 3 cos omega t plus 30 degrees here the amplitude is 3 and the phase is 30 degrees then corresponding to this sinusoid we will have a complex number represented like this known as the phasor and it will have two informations about vt first one is the amplitude that is 3 and the second one is the phase angle that is 30 degrees now here you can notice one thing 3 is the maximum value of vt so this phasor corresponding to vt is for the maximum value we can also have the phasor corresponding to the rms value of vt and the rms value will be 3 over root 2 and the phase angle will remain as it is and we can say that the rms value is 3 over root 2 because we know in case of sinusoids the rms value is equal to the maximum value divided by root 2 and uh, when we convert the sinusoids to phasors then it is more convenient to work with phasors as compared to sine or cosine functions and uh, the phasors provide a simple means of analyzing the linear circuits which are excited by the sinusoidal sources and the notion of solving the AC circuits using the phasors was first introduced by Charles Steinmetz in 1893 now before diving into more details of phasors we will quickly revise the basics of complex numbers and uh, we are required to know the basics of complex numbers because phasor is nothing but a complex number and uh, we will start with the rectangular form of complex numbers and uh, let us say that our complex number is represented by z and we know it has two parts the first part is known as the real part of the complex number and the second part we call imaginary part of the complex number and uh, let us say that the real part of the complex number is equal to x and the imaginary part of the complex number is equal to y and therefore we can say that our complex number z is equal to x plus j y and uh, we know j is equal to under root minus 1 so this form we call as rectangular form of the complex number and uh, now we will talk about the polar and exponential forms of the complex number the complex number z in polar form is written as r which is the magnitude with angle theta which is the phase angle and the exponential form of the complex number is equal to the magnitude multiplied to e power j theta and as i told you r is the magnitude of the complex number and theta is the phase of the complex number and uh, now we will find out the relation between polar and rectangular forms that is we will try to have r and theta when x and y are given and we will try to have x and y when r and theta are given and uh, for this i have taken the rectangular coordinate system the x-axis is for the real values of the complex number and the y-axis is for the imaginary values of the complex number and uh, let us say that our complex number z is equal to x plus j y in the rectangular form and uh, this means from origin to the value x on the real axis is our real part of the complex number and from origin to the value y on the imaginary axis is the imaginary part of the complex number and uh, corresponding to x and y we will have a point on the complex 
plane and now we can visualize our complex number as a vector like this and this vector will have the magnitude equal to r and this line will make an angle equal to theta which is the phase of the complex number now when you focus on this triangle you will find r is the hypotenuse of the triangle and we know it is equal to under root square of the base which is x plus square of the perpendicular which is y so if we have x and y we can have r from this particular result and uh, we know that the slope is equal to 10 theta and 10 theta will be y over x y over x so from here we will have the phase angle theta equal to 10 inverse y over x so if we know y and x we can have theta as well now what if we know r and theta and we are interested in finding out y and x then you can see that cos theta in this triangle will be equal to x divided by r so from here we will have the real part of the complex number equal to r multiplied to cos theta and sin theta will be equal to y over r so we can say that the imaginary part is equal to r sin theta and therefore our complex number z will be equal to r cos theta plus j sin theta now we will continue with our discussion on phasors the phasor representation is based on Euler's identity and we know the Euler's identity is e power j theta is equal to cos theta plus j sin theta and when you compare the right hand side with this you will find the real part of e power j theta is equal to cos theta and the imaginary part of e power j theta is equal to sin theta and uh, let us say that the sinusoidal function we are having is vt and it is equal to vm cos omega t plus theta now compare vm cos omega t plus theta with cos theta you will find in place of theta we have omega t plus theta and here one is multiplied so one is multiplied to cos theta but here vm is multiplied so we will have vm real part of e power j omega t plus theta equal to vt so we can write vt is equal to real part of vm e power j omega t plus theta now we can further write vt equal to the real part of vm e power j omega t multiplied to e power j theta now we will suppress this term e power j omega t which is the time component so here we are suppressing the time component and after suppressing the time component we will have vm e power j theta and when you compare this with this you will find vm is the magnitude and theta is the phase and this is the exponential form of the complex number which we call as the phasor and we can represent phasor like this also the upper case and bold v and we usually write our phasor in the polar form which is vm with the phase angle so now it is clear that v phasor is the phasor of sinusoid vt and it is a complex number representing the amplitude and phase of sinusoid vt and we are getting 
this complex number by suppressing the time component and therefore we can say that a phasor is the mathematical equivalent of a sinusoid when the time dependence is dropped and therefore vt is a time dependent quantity but v phasor is a time independent quantity and if you have the sinusoid vm sin omega t plus theta in place of cos if you have sine then also the phasor is going to be same now i will take two phasors and i will try to plot them in the same complex plane this is our real axis and this one is our imaginary axis and the first phasor is v phasor and it is equal to vm angle theta 1 and the second phasor is i phasor and it is equal to i m angle negative of theta 2 we will first plot v phasor we will have a vector like this with magnitude equal to vm and it will make an angle equal to theta 1 in anti-clockwise direction with respect to the real axis we are done with this phasor now we will plot this phasor we will have a vector making angle theta 2 but in the clockwise direction with respect to the real axis why because here we have negative of theta 2 and we know angle measured in clockwise direction is negative and angle measured in anti-clockwise direction is positive and this will have the magnitude equal to i m so this vector is our phasor v phasor and this vector is our phasor i phasor and there is one point which is very important the phasor analysis is applicable only when the frequency is same for example if this phasor is having the parent signal vt and vt is having the frequency omega and this phasor is having the parent signal it and it is also having the frequency omega then we can do the phasor analysis of it and vt but if it is having the frequency two times omega then we cannot do the phasor analysis of vt and it so this is one very important point related to the phasor analysis and now i will show you one animation and in the animation you can see that the vector is rotating at the angular frequency omega and uh, corresponding to the points on the circle we are having the sinusoidal waveform now you can easily imagine that if you increase or decrease the angular frequency then the sinusoid will change so this is all for this lecture in the coming lecture we will solve some questions related to phasors